Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, got Stacy with me. Shalom. And in today's class, we're going to be looking in the Zohar. Hmm, okay. It's a lot of books. Yeah, and just for funsies, we had Stacy to pull one off of the shelf at random. What number is that? This is number 12. And she pulled number 12 out of 23. And when we got in here and got to looking around, um, one of the uh, sections of this um, book called Tetzava kind of jumped out at us and thought we'll just go ahead and make a video out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So you want to read, Stacey? You want me to read? or I think I'm going to let you read because there's a lot of, just skimming over it, there's a lot of words mm -hmm. in here that I'm probably going to butcher. Mm -hmm. So you you probably would do better. All right, let's, let's read some of this down here in chapter 11 of Tetzava. It says, The old sage continues by saying that at the new moon on the first day, harsh judgment awakens and strengthens the other side. Then the whole world is under judgment. As the moon, mulched, radiates no light, all of the acts of correction that preserve the worlds arrive from the lower beings if their deeds are correct. If they are not, Malta remains without illumination until the wicked are separated from the righteous, and then judgment awakens. We learn that God gave the shofar to Israel in order to break the covering on the moon that prevents it from shining. The sound of the shofar arouses mercy below and benai above. The upper world, benai, always gives to the lower world, mulch it according to its present state. So human gladness below draws supernal goodness, gladness. The old sage says that on Yom Kippur, mulch it lights up with a supernal illumination from the light of the world to come. Not. So is it saying that once you blow the shofar on the new moon, you open up the mulchet in order for goodness and mercy to come through? This is just a synopsis. We come down here and we look at the verses that's supposed to explain all of this. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's look at verse 88. Okay. It says, the old says, open the discussion saying, blow a shofar at the new moon, at the full moon. On the feast day, now is the time for the supernal harsh judgment to awaken. When it awakens, the other side is strengthened by it. Once the other side grows strong, it rises and covers the moon, which is mulching. So it does not radiate any light, but is filled from the aspect of judgment. Then the whole world is under judgment, both higher and lower beings. And a proclamation is issued throughout all the firmaments. Prepare the throne of judgment for the master over everything, for he wishes to judge. You know a lot about the moon. Is there a period of darkness and then the new moon shines or something mm -hmm. like that? Yeah, once the moon so-called dies, a lot of people will say it dies, it actually goes to nothing. Um, goes to where there's absolutely no moon to be seen whatsoever. If you used to go out there tonight mm -hmm. and try to see, you're not going to see anything whatsoever. Zero percent illuminated tonight. There's okay. nothing there. Well, I guess it says something here to make me think that there was. It was talking about um, there is no no moon, and then once the you once the shofar is blown, the moon. I guess what I'm saying is. If you go outside tonight and you don't, when you don't see nothing, this is what is considered judgment. This is judgment time when, when the moon goes to zero. All right, verse 89 says, there is a secret here which shone upon us in the wilderness. So there's, there's a secret here. Why did supernal judgment awaken on this day? He answers, all the precious secrets and holy acts stem from the seventh, which is Malchus. And that supernal seventh, which is the supernal world that is called the world to come, namely Benai. 
Okay, you chuckled. What are you? What are you? Because it keeps saying this is mulched. Everything. I'm like, <laughs> everything is mulched. Yeah, what is mulched? Mulched is a lot of stuff now. <laughs> They spelled it in all caps too. It's like a straw man mulched covered a whole lot of stuff up in here. <laughs> so they learned this secret in the wilderness. Why did the supernal judgment awaken on this day? I guess it's new moon day. He answers all the precious secrets and holy acts stem from the seventh. And it could be referring to how the moon is on a seven day cycle. And so every seven days is important. All the candles sanctifications and blessings shine on mulches from there when the time arises to renew the blessings and holy acts so they will shine one should observe the corrections of all the worlds in order to renew the blessings and sanctifications so it said to blow the shofars for the sanctification it's supposed to be about blowing the shofar here mm -hmm. but here it's saying when the time arises to renew the blessings and holy acts, so they will shine, one should observe the corrections. So what is so what are the corrections? Then it goes on to say, All the acts of correction that preserve the world rises from the lower beings if their deeds are suitable. If they are not right, Motra remains without illumination until the wicked are separated from the righteous, and then judgment awakens. That's where you can score. From that judgment, the other side is strengthened and the accuser is present so that the wicked be given over to him. For it is written of him and searches out all perfection and covers the moon so it will not shine. Why does he not give over the wicked to the accuser? Because the Holy One, blessed be he, does not wish to destroy the works of his hands. So is that saying that the accuser, I guess the evil one, he stands there when all of this is taking place to receive the wicked, when all this judgment is being taken place to receive the wicked? Yeah, so this is the time that he's going to take our wicked deeds before the Father, I guess, tell him what we're doing. In the other side, there is a hard clipper that is impossible to break, except with the counsel of the Holy One, blessed be he, gave the children of Israel as written, blow a sofar at the new moon, at the full moon, on the feast day, in order to break the cover with which the moon is covered, which is smolted, so it does not shine. So the blowing of this shofar on the new moon is somehow going to break what I guess we could call a curse. Mm -hmm. Or accusations or something, I guess, something like that. The judgment, so you break, yeah, break it. Yeah, I would say, yeah, maybe judgment. When the children of Israel awaken below by the blow of the shofar, the sound that emanates from the shofar blasts the air and splits firmaments until it rises to that hard rock, namely the other side that covers the moon. It observes and brings forth an awakening of mercy. Then the other side that it rises and remains above covering the moon is confounded. That sound stands and removes that judgment from Malta. Since mercy has awakened below in Malta, another supernal shofar also awakens above, which is Benai, and produces a sound namely the motion of Zir Aspen that is called sound which is mercy it's saying sounds like it's saying that okay when we blow our shofar and then the shofar is being blown up in the heavens in the firmament as well by this motion of Zyar Aspen um, those two sounds break the judgment and mm -hmm. mercy is allowed 
Okay. You know, it goes on. It said, goes on. It says, sound meets sound, mercy meets mercy, because by the lower awakening there is also an awakening above. What do you think? What you said definitely makes sense. That it's the combination of the two efforts to actually do this thing have creating some type of resonance between the two dimensions. But it's saying that we blow ours first. Mm -hmm. So if we don't blow ours, that one is not blown. Maybe. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason why it's important to blow the shofar. Because somebody might not be born. The shofar might not be born. And then the spiritual renewal that we're supposed to get actually may not even may not even take place. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go on to 93. 93. You may ask how a sound below or an awakening below awaken that which corresponds to the above. Come and behold, the lower world, which is mulched, is always ready to receive and is called a precious stone. The upper world which is benign, gives it according to its state. If its state is a shiny countenance from below, in the same manner it is shown aboard from above. If it is in sadness, it is correspondingly given judgment. And that makes me think of, I guess, sort of, sort of like sowing and reaping what I'm saying if you if we don't put out it's not going to come back to us when it says the upper world gives it according to its state how the father is ready to give to us but we have to put the efforts in first so the mulched the lower world Mm -hmm. is always ready to receive the upper world is what's going to give but it's going to give according to the state that the lower world is ready to receive right. if the state of this lower world is shiny it gives shiny it's going to give shiny from above but if the, that what is below is in sadness then you're going to get sadness okay so it said it is correspondingly given judgment. I guess the judgment continues. So, but what is it saying as far as the shofar? Is it saying that if we don't blow the shofar, it's not a demonstration of the shininess? Uh, 94 says, similarly, serve Hashem with gladness. Because human gladness draws another, supernal gladness. Thus, just as the lower world, namely mulched, is crowned, so it draws from above. Therefore, the children of Israel are early to rouse with the shofar a sound, which is combined of fire, water, and air namely the central column which is combined of three columns they become one which rises and strikes that precious stone that is colored with these three colors which are white red and green which are three columns combined with sound and then it draws from above as it deserves so if I'm, I don't know, if I'm understanding any of this, it's the blowing of the shofar that's going to bring this joy. Breaks the judgment, yeah. And, and breaks, which breaks the judgment. If you don't blow the shofar, your current state can continue. Yeah, the accuser is still there accusing you and you're still under judgment. Let's go on to number 95. Once mulched has been perfected with the sound from below, mercy emerges from above and dwells upon her. 
and she becomes included in mercy from below and above. Then the other side is confounded and its power is weakened and it cannot accuse this precious stone which is mulched remains with radiant countenance in every direction with illumination from below and illumination from above so when we're making this sound down here mercy emerges from above we're calling up all mercy with this so far mm -hmm. confounding the other side let's finish it up with 96 is that the last verse? Mm -hmm. 96 says, When does she remain with the illumination from above? On Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. For on Yom Kippur, that precious stone is lifted up, namely Mulchit, with a supernal illumination from the light of the world to come, which is Benah. Then the children of Israel prepare a goat and send it to this potent wilderness which rules over it. Okay, now so is that saying that we only do this during the Day of Atonement? Or oh, that this, this happens during the Day of Atonement. But now the Day of Atonement is not on a new moon day. The Day of Atonement is the 10th day. But now maybe this is related to the 10 days of awe, which would start on a new moon day. That starts on the first day of the seventh month and lasts 10 days until atonement day. So that could be what it's talking about. We start to blow the trumpet on the memorial of Lord of Trumpets. Well, that makes sense. Being the atoning for our sins, being accused by the adversary and having mercy all following you know oh yeah it does so that kind of plays into the book called Gad the Seer that 10 days of all is a cleansing period to where you know we're ensuring that our names is written in the book of life so if we go back to the synopsis this is, I guess, this is ex telling us that this is not necessarily for every new moon day because remember it includes, it says, the old sage continues by saying that at the new moon on the feast day. So are we going to conclude that this is talking about on the day of atonement or as you were saying during the 10 days? Well, the only feast day that occurs on a new moon is the memorial blowing the trumpets. So. Right. Um, yeah, I believe you're right. So this is why we why we blow the trumpet on the memorial, blowing the trumpets. Yeah, I, I think this is a, this is important, and you know, I think it's information that we didn't know. Yeah, because, definitely. Because now we know the significance of it, and there's a lot of things that happen that we don't even know that's yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah, that's what we say. That um, it's kind of like the Old Testament. Just told us to do a thing without any explanation and it's only in these latter documents are we figuring out why it is we do what we do but that's good it's good to know all right so now before we close this video out let's come over here and let's look at the book called Gad the Seer okay when we hear new information like this um, it's sometimes hard to rectify unless we have other scriptures that we can go and look at this similar well like we said i believe gad the seer actually talks about the same thing down here in chapter 14. Mm -hmm. so let's just read through these right quick and let's uh speak on the highlights we'll probably cover it in more detail in another class but um just for the sake of what we've talked about so far let's let's compare it to what we can see over here in gad the seer chapter 14. okay if you will go ahead and read verse one and it came to pass on the first day of the seventh month at new year's in the 478th year after the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt, in the second year of King Solomon's reign over Israel, I had a vision from the Lord when I was up on the Gihon Spring. So this is Gad. He is David's seer. And he is here um, about the time of Solomon receiving this vision. Mm -hmm. All right. 
And I raised my eyes, and lo, the heavens rolled back like a scroll. And I saw the glory of the Lord sitting on an extremely high throne. So this is going to start sounding like the book of Revelation. Right. Okay, go ahead. And here is the appearance of the throne. Twelve stairs led to the throne, six of gold and six of silver. And there was a square back to the throne, like a sapphire stone. Yeah. So, and a lot of this symbolism we can find in the Old Testament as well. Like the stairs are pointing to Jacob's ladder. Mm, okay. All right, let's go. And at his right side were three chairs, and at his left side were four chairs near the throne, like the seven that see the king's face, covered with gold and silver and precious stones. This is who we refer to as the thrones. They are a class of angelic figure. Oh, wow. Okay. And the glory of the Lord had the appearance like that of the rainbow, his covenant. Now, this is a very important verse because this is where we learn the symbology or the meaning of the symbology of the rainbow. Mm. It's talking about his covenant. Anybody, anytime you hear of our father or the Messiah returning with the rainbow, what he's talking about is him returning with the covenant. Okay, okay, okay. I get that. And the host of the heaven were standing before him on his right hand and on his left. And Satan was standing by them, but behind them. So we have all of the archangels here, including Satan, which was actually one of the first archangels. But let's go on. And then a man dressed in linen brought before the glory of the Lord three books that contain the records of every man. Again, he's trying to um, show us who he's talking about without telling us directly. He's talking about this man dressed in linen. And this would be the being this opening those books that we hear about over in the book of Revelation. And he read the first book and it contained the just deeds of his people. And the Lord said, these are granted eternal life. Yeah. So these are this right here is the one we will call the book of life. OK. These are the ones who are um, the names written in the book of life. Yeah, when you say your names written in the book of life, this is when it's talking about these books will be opened. OK. And again, it's pointing how these books are opened on the first day of the seventh month, which is the memorial blowing the trumpets, mm -hmm. which is how we are making this connection with what we read over in the Zohar. OK, so it is actually on the memorial of blowing of trumpets that the books are opened. So, again, here's the first book. All right. Um, but then you see verse nine. And Satan said, who are these guilty people? And the man dressed in linen cried to Satan like a ram's horn saying silence. OK, so again, this is a connection here. Because like we read over there in the Zohar, the on um, the new moon of the memorial of blowing of trumpets is judgment. Mm -hmm. And so this is uh, Satan's part in the judgment is when he's coming and identifying us as these guilty people. The accuser. He's the accuser. Um, but then we have this man dressed in linen, you know, saying, no, it's not your turn to talk. It's right. Mm -hmm. All right. Go ahead. This day is holy to our Lord. And he read the second book, and it contained the unintentional sins of his people. And the Lord said, put that book aside, but save it until one third of the month passes by to see what they will do. Now, this is actually the most important verse here as far as this video that we're making. Um, this is where we learn about the 10 days of awe here. It's kind of convoluted, but when you look here, how it says that a third of the month had passed. Right. And a month has 29.5 or rounded up to 30 days in it. A third of the month is 10 days. Mm -hmm. So we're putting all of this together that on the memorial of blowing of trumpets is when these 10 days of correction or these 10 days of judgment start and they last for a third of the month. Well, it is during these times that the corrections are made. Mm -hmm. now, let's come back to this one. Let's go to verse 11. And he read the third book and it contained the wicked deeds of his people. So you have three different books. You have the book of the righteous or the book of life as we know it. Right. Then you have the book of the wicked. These okay. we going to see here um, what happens to them. But it is this middle group that is the majority of us. It is this middle group who are given these 10 days of repentance. Right. To, in order to see if they will turn around. I yeah. Guess. Leave the book of the wicked and actually be, get our names written in the book of life. 
Okay. So what this is saying is we have 10 years to get our names written in the book of life. Right. right? And what we learned over in the Zohar, it's important to approach these 10 days with joy, even blowing a horn um, in order for uh, these corrections to be made and for us to actually get our names in the book. Yeah, because once we blow the horn, the mercy and the grace of the Father comes, I guess, I guess you would say comes down Mm -hmm. on us yeah and um we're able to receive that yeah and so you could imagine those who are not keeping these feasts what for whatever reason are flat out missing out on this mm -hmm. and like we read over here in the synopsis it says all of the acts of correction that preserve the worlds arise from the lower beings if their deeds are correct if they are not, Mulcher remains without illumination until the wicked are separated from the righteous and then the judgment awakens. Right. So this is important to understand when thinking on these 10 days of awe, because what it's saying is that at the end of these 10 days, we can expect all of the wicked to be removed. Right. All who refuse to get their names written in the book are going away. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, let's see what happens to them here. And the Lord said to Satan, these are your share. Take them and do what you want with them. And Satan took the wicked to a wasteland to destroy them there. Now, this actually points us back to some of the acts that's going on on the Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. When, like over here in the, in the Zohar, verse 96 is talking about how you had these two goats. And one of them, they spit on him, they cursed him and sent him out in the wilderness. Well, that's what it's talking about here where it says, and Satan took the wicked to a wasteland to destroy them there. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, we can expect these to happen at the end of these 10 days or these 10 years, um, which we talk about the 10 years in other videos, but you know, the feasts for us are dress rehearsals so we can imagine all of this going on when we get ready for the memorial of blowing of trumpets and the 10 days of all leading up to atonement day. So we have these three books, as you said, the first is the book of righteous. The second is the book of wicked. And the third is, I guess you would call those that are straddling the fence. And upon this day, this day of judgment, I guess we would call it is when, um, the father allows Satan to, take his cho his his those who decide that they do not want to go on the father's side of the fence he allows satan to come and take them out and do as he pleased with them yeah that's satan's share mm -hmm. so back over here in verse 90 of tetsava is saying that the reason why he gives us these 10 days is because he's reluctant to actually give us over to satan anyway right he that's where we belong because of our wicked deeds because of the choices that we have made but He's reluctant to, like I said, he doesn't want us. He doesn't want to destroy what he's created here. So he gives us these 10 days, giving us the opportunity to, to correct. Is there some reason that the number is 10 days opposed to uh, 5 or 15? Well, I believe the feast days are parallel. I was just speaking with a commenter earlier about how the feast days um, in the spring seem to parallel those in the fall. And in the spring, on the 10th day of the first month, we have the choosing of the lamb. And so here, exactly six months later, the 10th day of the seventh month is when we get atonement. So there's some relationship with the 10th day of the month. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it is during these 10 days or these 10 years that we can expect a lot of trials. You know, because myself, um, many of us listening to this video, um, when these 10 years started, um, we were on the other side. I know me personally, I was keeping pagan feast days and I didn't know when the Sabbath day was and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but the trials, it is through the trials, like we learn over in the third Testament, it is the trials that actually pushes us towards holiness and righteousness. Yeah. If nothing you know, if something good always happens for us, you know, the Third Testament talks about how we always wish to have good things happen to us. But if it was not for the bad stuff, you know, I, as well as you just said, 
And many of our subscribers would say, if it was not for the bad things, we would definitely not seek the Father. Absolutely. I wouldn't have any reason to. Everything was good. Um, one analogy I was working on earlier was weightlifters. You know, our Father, um, he, our, the Elohim are like uh, weight training coaches, mm -hmm. right? So when we get under that 300 pound weight, you know, you're talking about we're going to bench press it. If we have a good trainer there, he's going to actually let, allow you to exert as much energy as you can to push it up as high as you can before he assists you. Right. Well, that's the same way our father is doing these trials. He allows us to go through stuff to strengthen us. If you have a bad weight training coach, he's actually going to help you too much. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you thinking that you're able to throw that weight up mm -hmm. when it's actually him over there that's lifting an extra 20 or 30 pounds for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. But it's only when you find yourself in the gym by yourself that you probably end up getting hurt. Yeah, you know, many times, you you many times when you uh, have to correct me, a lot of things you say, you're going to have to go through it yourself. Yeah, a lot of, you have to go through it yourself. And that's what these trials are about. That's what these 10 days are about to help correct us and to get us in a position. Like I said, we can get our names written in the book of life. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Well, guys, we may end up doing this video again. But if you got anything out of this one, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But make sure you leave us a comment and we'll see you in the comments section yeah um i know i got a few things out of it one of the things was the book of wicked book. i did not know that there was a book where the wicked are right um, written down yeah so all of our deeds are written down yeah so if you got a, um, anything from the class let us know like i said we'll touch on it again but for now shalom shalom